Hi, welcome to this talk, Low Trust Edge Network, no problem. We're going to talk about using Calico, VPP and WireGuard together to get great performance and security for your Kubernetes clusters in your edge networks. My name's Chris Tompkins, I'm a developer advocate at Tigeria. I champion uh, user needs to support the Project Calico user and contributor community. I've worked in networking since around 2000. Uh, I realized that I've heard the device CLI is not a scalable solution and became interested in large scale automation and infrastructure as code. When I'm not working, I love reading films, music, tinkering with technology. Um, I sometimes fly radio controlled gliders, but more often I crash them. Our other speaker today is Nathan Scribzak. He's a software engineer at Cisco and a Calico and VPP uh, contributor. Um, like me, he's into biking, hiking, and being outdoors, um, even sea kayaking sometimes, and has a French accent despite his name, which is interesting, we'll have to dig into that. So we have a short talk today, so we'll need to be brief in order to allow some time for questions. Keep in mind that you can always learn a great deal about Calico at projectcalico.org, about VPP at fd.io, and about WireGuard at wireguard.com. Instead of taking uh, too much time to talk about each technology individually, we'll try to focus on what can be achieved with all three. With that said, the Project Calico community develops and maintains Calico. It's an open source networking and network security solution for containers, virtual machines, and host-based workloads. Uh, it supports a broad range of platforms, including Kubernetes, OpenShift, Maranti's Kubernetes Engine, OpenStack, and bare metal services. Um, whichever data plane you choose to use, Calico offers blazing fast performance and true native uh, cloud native scalability, and it offers a consistent experience um, on a single node uh, or a multi thousand node cluster, um, public cloud or on prem. Project Calico currently has more than 6,000 Slack channel members, more than 150 contributors, and more than a million compute nodes are powered by Calico every day. Now, edge environments, as we all know and we've heard about at this conference, they have some unique challenges. Um, one that we're very interested in today is physical security, because protecting the servers themselves is tricky enough. Um, consider that you might have fire equipment testing um, in, in the uh, server room, and that might be out, outside of the control of your normal um, uh, security infrastructure. Um, but protecting the wires between them can be even trickier. Consider that um, if you have a copper cable run between rooms in a building that you could don't control, um, inserting a simple network hub on that wire, which would allow traffic interception, is a three minute job, cutting the cable, crimping the cable and inserting the switch. Um, if you had a three minute blip on your network, it could be that, uh, especially with Kubernetes failing over your workloads, it could be that um, your support team don't even investigate that and, and never detect uh, the intrusion. So we need to protect the traffic on the wire now, um, as well as on the node. Now Calico offers uh, granular access controls built in. So protecting uh, the workloads on the nodes and the, and the host protection itself um, of the Calico uh, Kubernetes nodes, um, we can use uh, Calico's built-in rich network and security policy model. Um, and we can use uh, the full Kubernetes network policy support that Calico implements. It works with the original reference implementation of Kubernetes network policy, but also extends it. Um, and it has optimized performance to, uh, it's built to go faster with uh, lower CPU consumption and help you get the best possible performance um, from your investments. Um, and that can be especially useful in edge uh, clusters. Um, adding on the VPP data plane gives you exceptional WireGuard performance, um, which helps to encrypt and protect data on the wire without a large performance penalty, um, as well as uh, quite a few other advanced features that you'll hear about um, from Nathan in a moment. But I've jumped ahead. First, we need to talk about what a data plane actually is. So here we can see three edge compute nodes vertically on the diagram. Um, each one you can see has a control plane and a data plane component. The control plane is the component of the node which is responsible for figuring out what's going on in the network uh, and establishing consensus of, for example, routing protocols. 
uh, it's typically implemented on a general purpose CPU. So even if it, even if you have a network node that has uh, ASIC uh, um, functionality, um, the control plane is usually implemented on the uh, general purpose CPU. The control plane manages complex device and network configuration and state. For example, you might be familiar with uh, protocols such as BGP, OSPF, and ISIS. Those are implemented in the control plane because they are necessarily sophisticated um, code. The data plane is different. It's responsible for processing the transit traffic, moving around all those cat videos. So you might have cat videos, you, you might have whatever content is relevant to your business, um, but that moves uh, ideally only through the data plane and it's, uh, the control plane doesn't touch that, uh, that um, content. Um, the reason for that is that the data plane is designed to move around um, user traffic as quickly as possible. Um, it should be designed to be the simplest possible implementation of the required packet forwarding features. It implements a fast path for the traffic. So Calico um, uh, offers multiple data planes um, and it separates the control plane and data plane. By doing that, uh, it achieves um, a lot of things. Now, one of those is you get, uh, by keeping your data plane code minimal, you can audit it more easily, you can uh, secure it more easily, you can bug fix it more easily. It also allows you to keep a targeted data plane feature set so you're not running code that is more complex than it needs to be. It allows you to reuse the code in the control plane of, of the node so that uh, all that complex uh, control plane code that you wrote can remain um, uh, relevant and doesn't need to be adjusted. So it's good for, uh, for auditing and so on there as well. It keeps you future-proof so you can adapt to changing future technologies and it keeps your uh, platform agile. Um, with Calico, you can change data plane uh, anytime you like. Um, the data plane is the component of a networking device that transports user data. So with that in mind, Calico offers uh, three um, data planes in GA today. Um, they are Linux IP tables, which is a heavily battle tested uh, data plane. It's the, the original data plane we supported. It offers uh, good performance and amazing compatibility and wide support. So for example, it doesn't have uh, high kernel requirements on the nodes. Uh, we also offer a Windows host networking service um, data plane, which allows you to deploy Windows containers and secure them on any cloud computing provider or on-premises. And we have a Linux eBPF uh, data plane, which um, scales to higher throughput, uses less CPU per gigabit, um, it also reduces first packet latency to services and preserves external client source IP address all the way to the pod. Um, it supports direct server return for better efficiency. But as well as those three, um, we have the VPP data plane. Now we'll talk at the end of the talk about where exactly that is in terms of uh, production readiness. Um, but first of all, we'll, we'll talk about what features it actually offers and uh, where that sits and how it helps um, to, to secure your edge workloads. Now, before we move on to talk about VPP, the other uh, unique requirement for edge environments is that they're often heavily resource constrained. We all know that in the cloud, you can always just buy a bigger instance. And if that doesn't work, you can buy an even bigger instance until your product does work. Um, you just have to hope no one complains about the cost. So obviously that's not possible in edge networks. It may be that you have a particular um, server set that you've been shipped out there um, or, or other constraints, um, even heat power that prevent you from being able to spin up um, bigger machines. So you need to be very aware of your performance and cost. And uh, the VPP data plane helps us to achieve that with Calico by being highly optimized for performance. Um, and that's another way of saying uh, low cost because essentially High performance on a, on a low spec is low cost. Um, Multi-architecture, so x86 and ARM support, and it doesn't require huge pages support from the kernel, so that can be useful if your environment doesn't support it. So we've talked about why um, Calico and VPP together are a great solution for um, securing your um, data both in your edge cluster in flight and, and on the host and in the container. 
So I'll pass over to Nathan, who's going to tell us a lot more detail about VPP itself. Thanks, Chris. So first, a few words about VPP. It has been presented in many talks, so I won't spend too much time on it. In short, VPP is a user space network data plane, which is highly optimized both for packet processing and at the API level as well. It relies on vectorization to provide a wide range of optimized L2 to L7 features, from NAT, tunnels to TCP and Quick. It is also easily extensible for plugins, which is something we are leveraging a lot for the Calico integration. If you'd like to learn more, don't hesitate to go on fd.io. There are plenty of resources available out there. So how does it integrate as a Calico data plane? When you deploy Calico VPP on a Kubernetes cluster, you will get one VPP instance deployed as a daemon set on each node. It does the routing, of course, but it also implements Kubernetes-specific data plan features in VPP plugins, such as policies, service VIP load balancing, potentially outgoing traffic source nothing, IP IP over X tunnels, and so on. All this logic is done in dedicated plugins that are optimized for this use case. We wanted to make it as easy as possible for users to configure, thus a switch to flip, so you only need to pass an interface name that VPP will use as a blink and a driver for consuming it. We also configure in a, in a friendly way for edge environments, where a source constraint might be challenging. So for instance, we use interrupt mode instead of pull mode, so that we don't waste CPU cycles. We leverage GSO and GRO to reduce the CPU load on the kernel, and in many cases, we support running over huge pages as well. So now, because VPP is a user space stack, there are several things that will be different between VPP and the other data planes. As you can see here, we insert VPP between the host and the network. On startup, VPP will grab the host network interface specified in the configuration. It consumes it with an appropriate driver, and it then restores the host connectivity by creating a turn interface in the host root network namespace. It will replicate the original uplink configuration on that interface, the addresses, the routes, so that things behave similarly from the host endpoint. Pods are connected just like the host, with a turn interface in each of the pods namespaces. The Calico control plane is running normally on the host, and it configures the data plane functions directly in VPP. Since we use turn interface and not VIF, we also don't need to worry about the layer 2 in the pods, which better matches the Kubernetes network model. But now you might ask, why do all this? What option does it bring as a Calico data plane? So to list a few things we're aiming at addressing, we are making exposing highly available services easier by using maglev as a load balancing algorithm for service IPs. We're also helping addressing specific user needs, uh, like adding new networking features by leveraging the fact that VPP plugins are easy to customize, at least way easier to maintain and deploy than kernel modules. And we're also helping optimizing network uh, intensive applications like VPN and proxies. And finally, the one that's, in my opinion, the most important for edge, envi uh, edge environment and deployments, we are enabling fast uh, internal encryption. So as Chris mentioned, encrypting traffic is usually required at some level for compliance and security reasons. For example, you, you want to be SOC 2 or PCI DSS compliant, or just because your edge DC is an untrusted network and you need connectivity to another remote DC and you have to go across the internet for that. Having an infrastructure in that context provides the encryption has really nice properties because it guarantees it regardless of application evolutions and also maintenance gets easier because if patches have to be applied or security parameters like key size have to be bumped, you only have to do it in one place. The main issue coming from this is performance as the default Linux implementation usually makes it quite impractical to use in production. With Calico VPP, we expose optimized implementation which allows this to work at line rate and with manageable CPU usage thus enabling this to be used in production. So we expose multiple ciphers and modes to address the different requirements application might have. We expose malware guard for compatibility with Linux and EVPF nodes. Uh, we expose IPsec for maximal CPU efficiency. And we also have an asynchronous IPsec mode to distribute crypto operations to multiple cores. So let's see how fast we can really go with this uh, and how it compares to other implementations. So our test setup looks like this, two Kubernetes nodes running on bare metal Skyrex uh, and connected with a 40G link. We have VPP running on each node, leveraging the available offloads, optimized interface drivers, uh, and targeting the different software accelerated crypto backends. And traffic is generated by Hyper on a single flow. 
So when we when using WireGuard, which is uh, the one available on the free implementations, uh, the kernel on EBPF reaches around 2.8 gigabits per second. UPP goes quite faster at 7.5 gigabits per second. IPsec gives even better figures, but only with UPP at 10 gigabits in synchronous mode. An asynchronous IPsec gives 12.2 gigabits per second, which is really nice. We also measured the global CPU consumption on both nodes during the tests, and VPP doesn't consume significantly more CPU to reach that throughput. The only outlier is the CPU for IPsec in asynchronous mode, which we still run in poll mode due to a pending issue, but we are working on solving it. So this really allows enabling encryption across nodes and still keeping an acceptable throughput, even if you're running in a resource-constrained environment like Edge. But the question remains, can we do faster? And seeing we still have a few minutes left, you can guess I'll at least try to convince you that we can. So in the previous schema, we still have an extra hub through the kernel. So this is not predominantly about copies, which of course we often tend to overestimate, and here we are already leveraging optimized Virtaio in that sense. But it's rather about the cost of syscalls and actually going through the Linux network stack. So why do we have this hub? The way applications usually consume packets is via socket APIs, so it's quite standard, but you have to go through the kernel, a code path which wasn't designed for the performance levels of modern apps. That's why we came up with GSO actually as a network stack optimization. But here, as we have VPP running, it would be nice to be able to somewhat seamlessly bypass the network stack and do L4 Plus directly in VPP, and maybe also spare a few copies along the way. So we can do this by providing two consumption models, so if the application handles packets, uh, it can leverage memory interfaces, the MEMIF, uh, with either GoMEMIF, LeMEMIF, DPDK, or maybe even by running another VPP instance inside uh, the pod directly. If the application terminates L4 plus protocols, it can leverage VPP's host stack with the libvcl, the VPP comms library. All this is exposed with simple pod annotations, and if you want to know more on how to use this, uh, there is actually an upcoming talk at KubeCon by Chris and Alois going into deeper details on that matter. So using this enables full user space networking, zero copy from the app to VPP, while still being able to run regular services like DNS through the socket, the socket API, because you, you might not want to run DNS over VCL. So let's say we want to redo the previous test with iPerth, but without the socket APIs. So we'll, we'll have to go through the VCL, and the setup now looks like this. Actually, we switched to Hyper 3 due to implementation constraints, but the results are really similar. Uh, we kept one flow, we kept the same testbed, and disabled encryption. We replaced it by IPIP as a node-to-node -node transport, as it is quite standard option for Calico clusters. And the results we get uh, are like this. So with Calico VPP, uh, so with Calico Linux, plain Linux, we reached 13.5 gigabits on a single flow. If we switch to Calico VPP, it bumps us to 14.5 gigabits per second. And if we switch to, to the VCL, performance actually climbs up to 20.6 gigabits per second, which is really nice. CPU usage is rather stable. It actually comes down with the VCL, as here VPP is in pull mode, so we don't see it work, and we are moving the TCP work from Linux to VPP. But now you might say TCP is great, but it's not ciphered, and we were talking about encryption, and you're right. But the VCL does provide a TLS implementation. So if we are if we go for using a Niper free like TLS client and server, we can run a similar test, but over TLS. And if we do this, we reach up to 9.8 gigabits of TLS node-to-node -node over IPIP in a Calico VPP enabled cluster. So even if you're running in an unencrypted cluster, you can still use the encryption speedup provided by VPP. As a note, this VPP host stack integration is still work in progress, reason why we still use the, the poll mode here. So we still need to stabilize the implementation and support interrupt mode, but it should be ready really soon. Finally, if your application is packet-oriented, you might want to use a MEMIF exposed by VPP. In this case, our, setup, our test setup will look like this. So we are using encryption again, IPsec in this case. We use T-Rex as a traffic generator, test PMD as a reflector, and we measure the number of packets coming back to, to T-Rex, so doing the U-turn. So this test is a bit different than the previous ones. We still use a single 5 tuple, but the traffic here is full Douglas, where IPF was mostly sending from client to server. 
So if we send 1500 bytes pa UDP packets with this, we receive about 5.9 gigabits of traffic reflected by TSPMD. So that means we are able to receive, decrypt, process, re-encrypt and forward 6G of traffic on a single node with a single VPP worker. So that means 12 Gs of aggregated UDP throughput over IPsec. So with all this, we can start targeting applications working at line rate over encrypted links, even in edge cluster where efficient and secure processing is most needed. So just a small word on the status of this work. The Calico VPP integration with IPsec and WireGuard support are already available as in tech preview. VCL and MEMF support are still under development, but should be available really soon. So that's it on my side, and I'll let Chris uh, give a few words of conclusion. Thanks. Thanks, Nathan. So VPP is a great match for edge use cases. Um, in summary, this is a new uh, VPP-based user space data plane option for Calico. It complements Calico's workload protection with incredible WireGuard performance to protect data in flight in edge environments. It lets you stay ahead of the curve by offering advanced support for experimental features, and it has low resource requirements, ideal for resource-constrained edge environments. That's nearly it for this presentation. We have a number of new exciting features on the horizon, including maglev load balancing, packet-oriented interfaces, um, and hopefully soon uh, general availability in Calico. Um, currently, the project is expected to move from tech preview to beta status in version 3.21 or 3.22. So if you'd like to stay up to date on this project, don't hesitate to join the VPP channel in the Calico user Slack. We publish our releases there. If you'd like to try it out, head over to the Calico documentation, which has setup instructions. If you have any questions at this any point, don't hesitate to ping us on the Slack channel as well, or you can ask them right away. Um, thanks very much for listening.